Imagine in your live streams that your alerts are magic cards or Pokemon cards, whatever, that just slap onto the screen, maybe a little explosion. And then in this card, you're gonna have like an illustration, maybe a wizard with an orb. And then within the orb, there's gonna be a profile picture of the person who just subbed. Their name is gonna appear. And then a brief little description, like a cool magic description. All right, open your eyes. You can stop imagining now because I made it. I made it. So yes, I went into Photoshop, designed the cards, and then I used a stock photo to create the magician or the wizard. You can download those images at gumroad.com slash gallery level right now and in this video I'm going to show you how I would set it up with OBS studio and then we're going to use streamer bots to trigger all of that with our alerts let's do it all right so here are the cards you're going to have three of each so three cards for the bits with different descriptions and this is something that we're going to use because I wanted to utilize I don't know some randomness to have like a different card every time or just a random card every time so those are for follows hence the heart and those are for subs now there's multiple ways of doing this with OBS studio and streamer bot maybe you're using mix it up or some other bot. It doesn't matter. I'm just showing you the concept, giving you the artwork that I made and then you make it work. All right. So we're going to create a brand new scene here, which I'm just going to call magic. So we're going to add a new source and that source is going to be image because that's what they are. We're going to call this one card bit one and we're going to browse and find those images here. I have card bits one. So that's going to be the first image. And on this, I'm going to press control C right click paste duplicate, which we're going to double click and basically look for the second one card bits two. Okay, I'm doing this in real time. Right click, paste duplicate, double click, browse, and a card three. So that's how you do it fast. If you want to import a bunch of stuff, I don't want you going, oh my God, it's so complicated. I have to do this so many times. Paste duplicate once more. And this time we're going to press F2 while we have the source selected to change the name. And this one is not going to be card bit. It's going to be card uh, sub or follow card sub one, control C, right click. Oops, nope, never mind. Double click and then find that sub one right there boom now you can right click duplicate double click find card sub two right click duplicate double click and the third one finally we're going to do it once more for the rest and i think you get the point rename the naming is not perfect but it doesn't matter now as you can see we have uh, a couple of differences with the cards well not much actually the bits is going to be the only one that's truly different because i have this little frame in order to put how many bits the person just gave right so keep that in mind also, we have the transparent orb in here. So this is where you would put the profile picture. If you do not wish to do that, which is completely fine, I can understand you wanting to respect people's privacy or whatever. You have shy people Add a color source. Just make it white and then place it behind. OK. Boom, bam, bop, drag it all the way down. And there you go. You just have a normal white orb or whatever color you want. If you do want to put people's profile pictures, what you have to do is add a browser source. Call it profile pick and set the resolution to 350. I believe it is on Twitch 350 by 350. Roughly place it here and same thing. Put it underneath. That's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to get rid of the color source like that. We also need some text. We need text for the username and we also need some text for that share amount. So I'm going to add source, go to text GDI, call this one cards username and type a random name. Select the font. In my case, I used Cambria, I believe. There it is. That's good. Since we're going to be modifying it, I want to press Control E. Positional alignment, we want that to be in the center. And then for the bounds, we want to be maximum size only, which means that we'll be able to scale it manually and it will stick to the boundaries. So basically, I can place this exactly where I want it to be, just like that. All right. And if I change the text, for example, if you have a longer name, no matter what happens, it will stay within the card. Cool. Another text for the cheer amount, right? So I'm just going to copy paste that text that I just created. Control C, right click, paste duplicate, drag it down. We can feel it snap when it's the center. I'm going to drag here. I'm going to drag here and there you go. And for this one, you can type nice. We get a little bit, a little bigger. All right, make sure you change the name of the source, right click rename or press F2. Cards bit amount. Congrats, you have all the info layers. And what we're gonna do now is actually group up all the cards per category. So I'm gonna pick card bit one, two, three, hold shift, click up here, and then right click and click group selected items. So I'm gonna call this one bit group and collapse that. Boom, beam, boom, bam. That's what it's supposed to look like. Same thing for subs, right click, selected items. Same thing for follows. OK, collapse them all. It should look like this. What I'm going to do now is actually give some colors to the info sources so I can see them clearly. 
Now you might notice that those information sources are not within the groups. So if I'm going to move this, it's most likely not going to move together. And we're going to do this by basically delaying their appearance. So the cards are going to slop down and then those informations are going to pop up. Of course, if you don't want to show the profile picture, you actually want to have that color source and the orb be inside of the group. You will need one color source for each. OK, so since we're going to delay their appearance, we want like a little bit of a transition. So the card slaps down. We don't want it to just pop. So we're going to right click on each of them. We're going to go to show transition. In my case, I want to use Luma, Luma wipe. Sorry, <laughs> I'm going to pick sinus nine. Click OK. I'm going to go back to show transition and I'm going to make sure that this is something like 300 milliseconds. What that does is if I turn this off and I turn it back on, I get a little, a little something appearing. Do the same thing for card's username and profile picture. This is where you decide what your transition out is going to be. So after the card slaps down, what does it do? I, I'm going to make it just fade out or it can do the sinus nine Luma wipe out just like we did for the in transition. OK, so basically, once again, we're going to right click and this time hide transition Luma wipe sinus nine and this time we're keeping it at 500 milliseconds so do the same thing for each source here that is colored and also for the groups all right i'm going to make sure i turn on everything inside of the groups so we can test them all right so cards bit amount boom disappear cards username boom disappear follow group all right subs group and bit group and finally profile pick cool now time to animate the card movement I'm going to turn this on and we're going to use the move plugin. So you need to have that installed. I'm going to right click on the scene magic. I'm going to go fil to filters, then add a move source filter. We're going to call this one bit final, actually bits final, because this is going to be its final position. When it slaps down, this is wherever it's coming from. This is how it's going to end. So I'm going to make sure I select the right one, which is the bit group. Then I'm going to click get transform, which shouldn't change anything. Now I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call it bits out because I actually want it to be out of frame. All right. Now with big group selected, I'm going to make it huge. And I'm just going to place it to the side, maybe a little diagonal up. I think that's cool. And then I'm going to click get transform. So that's the position outside of the frame, <laughs> if you will. If I click on bits final here, if I turn it on, it should bring me back here and this should bring it back out just like that. Now you just need to do the same thing for the rest of the groups. So subs groups and follow group. Uh, you can just duplicate this, call this one uh, sub final, for example, just make sure that you select subs group. You can duplicate bits out, call it subs out, make sure you select subs group. But you'll notice that um, the values here in the transform did not transfer through. So I'm going to go back to bits out. Now I'm actually going to copy paste this into subs out. So now it knows which position it needs to assume. Let me turn it on Boop. and then subs out looks like that. Subs final looks like that. Do the same thing for the last one, which is follow group. Of course, always test it. Bam, bop. That works. Now, if you want to make it extra spicy, you can go to YouTube and type energy shockwave overlay. You want to make sure you use like a free asset and then you can come through and basically download it, trim it and have a cool little explosions that you can trigger at the same time the card slaps down. I actually have one. I'm going to click plus here and I'm going to add it as a media source. I'm going to call it shockwave browse and find it. I'm going to set it on a loop for now just so I can see what it looks like. Nice. I can make it full screen or even more. And although I could use blending modes like right click, blending mode, add to make it interact with the bottom. If I add this as a scene on my other scenes, since it's going to be an alert, it's not going to work. It's not going to be transparent. So we'll have to key this out, which is fine. And we're just going to use a color key filter. So shockwave, let's click filters. Let's click plus. Let's add a color key. And we're going to go custom color for the color key, select color. And that's going to be black because that's what we're removing. Let's take a good look at it. You can play with similarity. If you bump it up too much, then you won't have a lot of residue. Don't worry too much about like the gray or even the dark parts that are visible. I think that's nice. And then what we're going to do is add a color correction filter. And now we can basically correct everything. If you want it to be super bright, just bump up the brightness. Now you're going to have this, but if you want to keep a little bit of contrast, maybe that's not the best. You can bump up the contrast, of course, play with the gamma and you can add a color multiply here to change the color. I like going with purple 
Or you can just pick a color that matches the specific card, but you know, you have three cards. If you want to add three different blasts, that's on you. I'm not doing this on this tutorial. <laughs> there you go. Let me size that up a little bit better. Um, this one comes with an audio. You can keep it if you want it to go or whatever. I'm going to mute it. There you go. I like that. I'm going to place that at the bottom. And maybe I'm even going to duplicate it. You know what? Let's do it. Right click, copy, right click, paste a reference, drag it down. And this one's going to be on that side because I want it to have a bigger impact. Ooh, that's cool. I can group them up. This is not necessary, by the way. <laughs> this part you can skip if you want to. And I'm going to call this one shock group. Uh, what I can also do is, you know, stop looping it like this. So now every time I turn the whole group on, I have my little explosion thingy. Cool. So we have all the info with their little transition in and transition out. We have the cards and their animation. We have all the groups set up. I would say it's time to go to streamer bot in order to trigger it all, depending on which alert you have. So we're going to start with bid group. So I'm going to turn everything else off and we're going to focus on that. I'm going to open up streamer bot here. I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to click add. I'm going to name that action cards bit alert. We're going to put in a group called cards and click OK. Now, there's going to be a bunch of steps, but it is really not complicated. You just need to visualize in which order you want things to happen. Now, what is the first step in which state is your card going to be when it's on standby? Well, actually, it's going to be um, in the out position, so it's not going to be visible. Right click bits out. This is your out position. This is your standard position. Your bit amount, username, profile pic also going to be invisible at this point. So now you get to choose what happens first. I'd say turn on that card group, first of all. But also, since you have three cards per group, they shouldn't be on. So you can hide them for now. And then we're going to tell StreamerBot to pick a random card within those three to turn on. And we're going to do this using their OBS groups, set random group source visible. So that's the whole premise of this thing. <laughs> that's the only reason why I had this idea in the first place. Which group is going to be the bid group. You can click OK. We can even test it, actually. So here you see I have my three bit cards. If I just test this, you see a random one. So OK, turn one of the cards on and then maybe play that animation. Slap it onto the screen. Right click OBS scenes because that's where our remove filter is. Set scene filter state and bits final is the filter we want. So click OK So right now. Turn a card on, slap it on the screen. But here's the thing. It takes a little bit of time for this to be slapped on the screen. So let's add a delay or a delay and 300 milliseconds should be the time it takes. All right. Now what? There's a bunch of information that we need to show, right? So right click OBS sources, set source visibility state. OK, so which sources do we want? Profile pick. OK, so we have a visibility state here. We can just duplicate it, duplicate, double click, pick the other one. What else do you want? We want the username for sure. OK, right click, duplicate that, double click. What else do we want? The card's bit amount. Very important. OK, pretty nice. Is there something else that we might want to trigger once the card is on the screen? Um, yeah, that little explosion that we added. So let's go OBS sources, set source visibility state. So shock group source is shock group. Remember, and we want to make it visible. Nice. So basically pick a card, slap it on screen, wait for that animation to end. Show me the information, profile pic, username, bit amount, and also do that little explosion. So now your card is here with all the information. This is where you decide how long you want it to stay. Right click, core, delay, and let's say five seconds. Nice. Now, I personally decided that my out transition for the groups was going to be a fade out. We added that transition out for each group. So I'm actually going to hide the group at this point. So now I can duplicate that one double click and pick the bits group. OK, now at this point, I want the state to be hidden. So now imagine that the card is fading out. We also want the information to fade out so I can find the visibility state for a bit amount, username, profile pick, duplicate those and just set them to hidden. OK, so right click, duplicate sub action, double click, hidden. Now, at this point, everything is hidden, so your screen is completely blank, but you do need to reset everything. So we're going to add a little bit of a delay, core delay, and I'll put 500 milliseconds. And at this point, there's two main things that you need to do. 
one, you need that card to go out of frame again. So you need to play that filter. Let's do that by just duplicating that filter state here, double click, and we just wanna pick bits out. So everything is hidden, everything is invisible. It's doing this in the background. The other thing that you need to do is you actually need to hide whatever card it picked randomly. And we're gonna do this by doing right click, OBS, sources and hide groups sources so since it's not going to know which specific card it picked this specific action will just hide everything that's in the group and of course that group is bit group now there's one quote unquote final thing that we need because we haven't done all the information stuff yet it's our shock group we made it visible we do need it to be invisible at the end <laughs> so that we can restart it duplicate sub action here double click and hidden hopefully i didn't mess up we should be able to test this for now. So right now, what I'm gonna do is basically add a trigger, random trigger, but this is gonna be bits. So I can right click, go to Twitch, go to chat, go to cheer, leave this empty, click OK, and right click and test trigger. Just like that, just to make sure that it reset it correctly, we're gonna test again. And clearly there's an issue. And our issue is that our bit group is not visible at the beginning. Oh, and that's because I turned it off here to have that fade out transition, but I never told it to make the whole group visible in the beginning. And that's easily fixable. Right click, duplicate sub action, double click that action, make it visible and just place it in the beginning, just like that. So mistakes happen, that's how you fix it. Right click, test trigger. Nice. Now that weird shockwave thing is actually taking its sweet time. So I'm gonna double click here. I'm gonna play around with the speed a little bit. I'm gonna go 150 on each. Since this is a reference, it's automatically added. And one last time, shkabwam. Congrats, you've done the animation. And uh, the only thing left to do is change the values, like the actual information that shows on screen. Let me turn those on real quick. And even though I'm doing it at the end, you definitely wanna change the information before the animation starts. So we do this by right clicking, going to Twitch, going to user, and picking get user info for target. Source type is going to be user, and we're gonna click okay, it's right there. We're then gonna right click, go to OBS, Go to sources and we're going to click on set GDI text. So modify one of our texts. Our source here is going to be card username, that one. And you can see at the bottom here, Streamerbot tells you that you could put target user to put the target's name, to put the user's name. So let's just do that. It is case sensitive. Click OK. We're also going to change the image. So right click OBS sources, set browser source URL. And the source is going to be profile pic. Now again, Streamerbot tells you that you could put target user profile image URL as a variable. So let's do this. So percentage and end with percentage. Click OK. And then finally, the bit amount, which I don't remember what the variable was, but I know it's going to be OBS source set text GDI cards bit amount. And now I just need to figure out the variable. All right. Seems like my camera overheated. <laughs> um, I looked it up. It says bits. I'm not completely sure if that's going to work, but I'm going to put percentage bits percentage and hopefully that's the right variable. So we added what four actions here and we want them to be on top all the way on top. But of course, the target user to be on top here. Maybe I want a little bit of delay before it starts doing stuff just to make sure that it switches out everything. So I'm going to go car delay and let's put 200 milliseconds and place that right before making the group visible. There you go. It's also breaking it and making it more visible. All right. So let me turn those off and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, I don't know how it works when I just test trigger like this, if it's going to add my information, but let's test it. Let's bring this here, right click, right click and test trigger. It actually works. Now I'm noticing a little issue here is the profile pick is small, which is fine. We can just make it 400 by 400. Make sure it's placed right. 
just make it bigger in general. So I'm guessing this is the last person to give me bits and that's why they're showing up. That's pretty cool. One more test, right click, test trigger. Nice. Maybe we want the profile picture to fade out faster. So we're gonna go profile pic, right click, hide transition. I'm gonna set that to like 150. There we go, click away. And finally, Nice, let's go. All right, let me turn my camera on and show you what it would look like in a real life streaming scenario on my just chatting scene. So if I go to my full screen, um, just chatting scene here, hi. I would add this as its own scene. I would go plus scene, add existing scene, find magic and click okay. You can see it's tr completely transparent when you add it like this. And now you're chilling. Hey guys, what's up? You're live streaming and someone decides to give some bits. This is what's gonna happen. <laughs> nice. So profile picture, the amount of bits, their name is going to show up. We can test it again with a different user. You're gonna see like that, they give bits and they show up like this. Now, of course, on your gameplay scene, different scenario, we're gonna add it as a scene. We're gonna find magic. Boom, add that, but maybe you don't want it to be full screen. In that case, you can just scale it down a little bit, put it off to the side a little bit. We know it's gonna be centered. And now you're playing your game. Someone decides to give bits. We're gonna test that trigger right now. And this is what happens. Their profile picture, their name, and the amount of bits. Keeping in mind that, of course, I showed you how to do it for the bits, but you also have access to subs and also follows. And I'll show you how fast you can set that up real quick. So let me test it again. I think that's pretty nice. I think that's pretty nice, actually. <laughs> so of course, right now you're wondering, oh my God, I just spent like an hour setting this up for the bits. I am not going to do the same thing for the alerts, for example. And actually, you don't have to. So under cards here, I have bit alert. Sorry, actually, I'm going full screen is probably not a good idea here. Uh, I'm going to right click this. And I'm going to click duplicate. All right. So now I have a duplicate of my action. Make sure you can see cards bit alert copy. So here I have card bit alert copy. You can double click and I'm going to rename it to subs. Subs alert. Now, first thing I want to do is remove the cheer amount since it doesn't apply to subs. So here OBS GDI text cards bit amount. Delete. We go down a little bit. We're gonna see cards bit amount here, delete. And finally here, delete. Nice. Now the username and the profile picture doesn't change. So that's good. OBS source visibility group is bit group. So we actually want this to be subs group. Random group source to make it visible. We want that to be subs group. So double click, switch it. Now the scene filter state is on bits final. We want that to be subs final. Now this turns on the profile pick, so that's fine. This turns on the username, that's fine. This turns on the little shockwave, so that's fine. Now we're resetting everything. So it says bit group here, just set it to subs group. It's gonna hide the username, that's fine. It's gonna hide the profile pick, that's fine. It's going to move the group out of the way. We want that to be subs group or subs out, sorry because that's the filter. And OBS hide groups sources, we want that to be subs group. And that's pretty much it for the sub actions. Now, of course, the trigger needs to be different. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the cheer trigger, okay? And I'm gonna add a subscription trigger. So right click, Twitch, subscriptions, and you can pick which one you want. I'm just gonna pick subscription, any tier, click okay. Oh, someone's knocking at my door. Well, that was a wrong address. Um, what was I saying? Oh my God. Uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh yeah, I was gonna test subscriptions. So uh, we're here. I'm just gonna right click test trigger. And there it is. Technically, you can also make it so that it changes the color correction to actually match the color, but that's on you. That's on you, okay? I put you, I led you to water. Now it's time to drink. <laughs>
So it's up to you to do the same thing for the follow. I showed you how easy it was to just duplicate everything. Uh, in the triggers, it will be Twitch and probably something follow, right? Channel follow right there. That will be your trigger for the follow one. You know what? I'm going to change the color just for the Twitter video. I'll be right back just for my Twitter video. So I would duplicate it basically. And then to the group, I would add a color correction filter. Boom. And I would play with the hue to give it the color I want. You see how this is? This matches the sub color that I picked. Damn, that looks good. <laughs> All right, let's not put it on the loop. Let's turn it off. Now I just want to make sure that under cards sub alert, double click on visibility state on chalk group and just pick chalk group two. So easy. Bottom here too. Boom, boom, chalk group two. And we should be good to go. Test it real quick. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. <laughs> Okay, now I can make the Twitter video. If you want to add a little bit of card games aesthetic, I created this. So this is for bits. It shows people's profile picture, their name, and then the amount of bits here. But if you want to have subs too, that is something that you can also have. Boom, that's one of my subs. And we have that color. I also have one for follows. The artwork is completely free. There's actually three different card descriptions per alert, including a follow one. And you can watch this full tutorial on YouTube to see how to set it up in OBS Studio and actually have it pick a random card out of the three every time. You think Twitter is going to like this? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will see you later. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out. Follow me on Twitch.